everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the United States and around the world. It is a uh, crafter noon, and today we're going to be playing with the new Feathers and Flora card kit, and we're going to be making some feather cards. Well, one feather card. I think this technique might take a little bit longer, but that's okay because I like to take my time and be very thorough when it comes to a new type of technique. So it's great to see everybody out there. We are, um, everybody was asking about the weather, and I want you guys to know that we were not in the line of those storms. We had rain, we had lightning and stuff like that, but we didn't have any of the severe storms that were reported on the news yesterday and this morning. That was all north of us. So everybody here at Gina K Designs is fine. Uh, we made it through without any problems. We actually had worse storms just a couple days ago. We had some bad storms then, some real bad straight line winds and stuff. But we're all okay here. I hope all of you tuning in are okay. Everybody is safe. Um, before we get started with our technique, let's say hello to Tom. Hey. Hello to Tom. <laughs> How are you? Doing great. Happy, Good. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah. Thursday. So today, Tom, I'm going to do a little, well, I did a little uh, demonstration. I don't know. Remember the other night I was showing this, how I used this as a stencil? Yes. I'm going to be doing this, but I have a couple other steps that are going to make it much more interesting than just this. So a lot of excitement out there. Yeah. This, so. Yes. Well, it's so good to see all of you. I'm, I think we're having a little delay on Facebook. I do see some of the Facebook comments coming in now. Welcome everyone. Okay. Well, let's get started right away. I'm going to show you the stamp set that I'm going to be using. For those of you who maybe missed our uh, release party, this is the stamp set that I'm going to be using. This is the uh, Fancy Feather set. Let me get something better here so that you guys can see this a little bit better. I'll put the insert under. Okay, there we go. So this is the Fancy Feather stamp set. I'm going to be using this today, um, but I'm not going to be using the feathers in it. I'm going to just be using one of the greetings. And I've got lots of techniques coming up showing you with the feathers. And if you happen to, you know, check out Jennifer McGuire's video, she did use the feather stamps. I'll be using them as well in upcoming videos. But I showed a little um, sneak peek of how you can do some stenciling with this. And I saw a couple comments saying, please show how to do that in your video. So I'm going to show you this technique today. And we're going to be adding a background stamp. So I am going to be adding the Petite Flourish background stamp. Although you can use any background stamp you want, or you can just use a regular stamp. Like if you don't have a background stamp, you could use these for this technique, or you could use you know, anything like a delicate flower design. You could even use something like this if you wanted. This is Hannah's new set and just stamp a bunch of big leaves for my background part. So whatever you want to do is totally fine. You can use what you have in your collection already to do this. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock and I've trimmed this piece of cardstock down to three and a half inches by five inches. Now you can do the same exact thing by using the Master Layouts 2 die set and you will end up getting a little stitched edge, which is very, very pretty. So you can certainly do that. Welcome everyone. I see lots of people coming in. I know a lot of you are working today and you're sneaking in on your lunch break. So I appreciate that. Okay, so the other thing that we're going to use is we are going to use this set of feather dies. And this is the fancy feathers die set that comes in the kit. And you get these three large feathers. So we're going to be using these today. Now, I've already cut some feathers out. And hold on a second. I got to silence my phone here. This person doesn't know I'm live. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a stencil out of this piece of cardstock. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, I did pre-cut some feathers just so that I had an idea of what I wanted this to look like. And what I want to do is I actually want my feathers to go off the edge a little bit. 
So I'm actually going to use a bigger piece of cardstock for this. So let me get a bigger piece. I'm going to get a quarter sheet of cardstock. But I want to lay this out on my three and a half by four and three quarter set so I can get an idea of what I want it to look like. I kind of wanted some of these feathers to extend a little bit outside of the paper like this. See that? So they're all extending a little bit outside. Okay. And then I wanted to put my greeting here. So I was going to use one of the greetings. I was going to use this hope is the feather that reminds us we have wings. And I wanted to use that greeting right here in the corner. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this piece of cardstock here and I'm going to lay it onto a quarter sheet. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't want my dies to cut off the edge when I make my stencil, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this piece of cardstock, and I'm going to just take a little colored pencil here, and I'm just going to kind of go around the outside of the piece of cardstock that I ultimately want to use for my technique. Okay, and that just gives me a very light sketchy area of where my piece of cardstock would be. So this way, when I lay my dies out to create my stencil, I know where to go outside, but how to keep it most of it inside. I hope that makes sense to everyone. So I can do that same layout here that I did on my small piece and I'll know where this is all going to fall outside. Okay. All right. And then I want to make sure that I have enough room here. Let me move this down a little bit. I'll move that like that. I want to make sure I have enough room left for my greeting, which is going to go right in here. And I think that'll work really nicely. Okay. So with that in mind, let's get the die cutting machine out. And we're going to create our little homemade stencil out of this piece of cardstock. Okay. So I'm going to use my die cutting machine. I'm going to use my Spellbinders die cutting machine. And normally I like to cut dies like this upside down, but I am going to cut them right side up because I want to see where I'm cutting here. So I'm going to lay that out again. So this one is going to go right about here. All right. And this one is going to go here. So these are going to lay outside of the card a little bit. We want to make sure we have just a little bit of the feathers going outside. And then again, that definitely gives me room for my greeting. Yes. Okay. Move that a little bit over. Okay. That looks good. I just want them to be evenly spaced too. I don't want these two to be too close and that one not to be where I want it. So there we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to cut these out, and this is creating my stencil. All righty. Okay, now I'm going to pull these out. These are so gorgeous. Now, we could use these, especially if I was going to do some sort of inking technique, but I am not going to do an inking technique right now. I did cut that one outside a little bit, but that's okay. Oh my goodness. This person is desperate to get me on the phone. Okay, there we go. Get these out. Okay, so now I've got my stencil. This is going to be my stencil. So I'm going to move all this over here. I can save these feathers. I can use my mono sand eraser to get rid of that little bit of colored pencil on there. You can use a regular pencil and then you can just erase it so you can keep your cutout feathers. I just don't have a regular pencil here. I have some, but they don't have points. <laughs> I just use the eraser. I use 
used it for a stamping technique. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to that piece right there. And I'm going to lay this on top. And I can see where my feathers will go outside of my piece of cardstock, just like that. That's how I want them to go. And I can even see where I should line up my card because the line left behind lines up with the card. Can you guys see that? And the line down here lines up with the card. So this is kind of where I wanted them. I can see that that all looks correct. All right. Now... Now I have that in place. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to attach this to the back with a little bit of washi tape just to secure it. Because I'm going to be doing a little bit of aggressive ink blending here because I really want color. And I'm also going to be, um, you know what, before I do this, let's do something else. Let's get the greeting on there first. I hope you guys aren't stamping along with me because I'm all over the place on this, but this is my idea for today and I think it's going to be gorgeous. All right, we're going to stamp the greeting first so we know where the greeting is going to be. So I'm going to use this one. Hope is the feather that reminds us we have wings. Now this is the first time I'm using this stamp, so I am going to use my finger just to rub any residue that might be left behind from the manufacturing process. Okay. I don't think we should be frozen. So I would suggest going out and coming back in. If that doesn't work, try switching from YouTube to Facebook or vice versa. Okay. So we'll get that there like that. And now I can just check that. Yep, that's going to be just fine. All right, I'm going to stamp this in black onyx ink. Make sure that looks straight, and it does. Okay, black onyx ink. I'm going to use my ink cube here, and I'm going to do two light stampings because, again, these are very delicate words, so I don't want to squish the stamp too much. I'd rather do two layers of black then squish it. So I'm just going to lightly rub my Chucky tool over it. Ooh, that is such a beautiful greeting. I love how delicate it is. And it's so hopeful. Okay. All right. So there we go. We have our greeting in place. You're watching on a big screen? Oh, good. So far, so good. Okay. Yeah, I think sometimes... Like we, we go live um, during the nighttime when a lot of people are home and on the internet. And then during lunchtime when everybody gets their lunch break and then the internet gets really super crowded. So I think sometimes we go on and if you're in an area that's heavily saturated with people on the internet, that can create some problems. Okay. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my background stamp. I am going to check this and make sure this still looks good. Oh, yeah, that looks fine. That will be fine. I can peek under there and just make sure my greeting isn't too... Oh, no, I can see right through. I can hold it up to the light and see the greeting right through. Okay, perfect. So now I am going to add my background stamp. But before I add my background stamp, I do not want to stamp over my greeting. So I'm going to take either a post-it note, which I could probably use these, and I'm going to create a little angle here right over where my greeting is. Just like that. And I'm pressing that down pretty aggressively. And I can also hold this up to the light. I know you can't see me do that, but just to make sure that it's not too close to that edge. Okay. I want to hide that. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my embossing magic pad, and I'm going to put that all over the surface of this piece of cardstock. And now I'm going to ink up this stamp using embossing and watermark ink. And that's this ink right here. This is great for embossing powder. And I am going to be using some of the Gina K Designs white embossing powder. I have it in this Gladware container. 
Um, I've tried the smaller containers and I do like them, but there's something about this big container where I can just let the powder pour back in. I really like it. I know a lot of people use coffee filters. There's all kinds of ways to do it. Okay, so I'm going to ink this up really well. And it doesn't matter where you, you know, what part of this stamp you use because it's just a consistent background design. This is our Petite Flourish background stamp. You can use any background stamp. Lots of other ones in our collection. I'm sure you've got a bunch in your own collection. And I really, my ink pad's just a little dry, so I really want to make sure I get it nice and inky. Okay, that should do it. And then I'm going to take this and flip it upside down like that. And then I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to put pressure, especially along this line here. I want to make sure that I get good pressure. Now, if you don't want to touch it, you can put another piece of cardstock over it. Something like maybe a little bigger than this. And this way you can rub all the way to the edge and get a good impression with your background stamp. This is the way I like to do all my background stamps. I don't like using the Misty for them. I don't like trying to stamp them with a big acrylic block. I find that this gives me the best impression. Okay, and now, there we go. That looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to get my white embossing powder. I'm going to remove these post-it notes. And then I'm going to add the embossing powder on here. Now, this might be difficult to see because it's white on white. Oh, it looks so pretty though in real life. You're gonna love the way this looks. Um, and then when I take the pictures, I will make sure that I get good quality pictures so that you can see this. Okay. So I'm going to just get rid of any parts that I don't like, any dust where I don't need it. But again, because we're not going to be stamping down here, if you get a little bit where you don't want it, you're not even going to see it because it's white on white. Okay. Now I'm going to heat this up using my heat tool. Get that. I like to heat it up just a little bit beforehand just to make sure that I don't have to hold the heat tool too long on it because it warps the paper a little bit. So if I do this first and heat it up, then it embosses much more quickly. And you'll see it change right before your eyes. Somebody asked me the other day if they could use a hair dryer for embossing, and the answer to that is no, because it just doesn't get hot enough. You can use it for drying your paper if you want, if you're doing like water techniques and stuff, but it'll just kind of blow all the embossing powder off and it just won't get hot enough to really melt it. Okay, now can they see that at all, Tom, if I do that? Can they see any of that shine? Uh. It's kind of tricky on here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Trying to give you a little bit there. All right. Well, well, you'll be able to see what happens, though, in the next step. Okay. So now it is time to put that handmade stencil back onto our project. And we're going to add some color. Okay. So I'm going to actually add a little bit more emboss, a little bit more um, of this stamp down into this corner. Because as I can see where I'm going to stencil, it's not going to fill in there. And I can do that very easily. This is not a throwaway. So you can do this very easily. All you have to do is just ink up a little bit on the edge. Okay. And then... We're going to turn the stamp, we're going to ink it up, we're going to turn the stamp, and we're going to add just a little bit of design right here. Just because that's going to show through the feather, and I want it down there. Perfect. 
And now I'm going to do that. No, I did not design this stamp set. I had an artist do this one for me. Okay. So now I've added a little bit down here. There we go. And now I've got it continuing down there. So that's an easy way to do it. Just grab the corner and right down onto where you want it. Okay, so now we're ready for the feathers. Whew. Okay, so I am going to place this where I had it before. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape to the back just to hold it in place. The background stamp that I'm using today is uh, Petite Flourish. We have a lot of Petite Flourish. We have our new embossing folder that's Petite Flourish and then we have the stamp set. Okay. get a little bit here and we'll do one more over here. Okay. So now it's time to do some ink blending. So I've chosen a couple of colors here. I've got Wild Wisteria, Turquoise Sea, Jelly Bean Green, and Lucky Clover. I think I'm going to use Jelly Bean Green today instead of Lucky Clover. I just wasn't sure which one I wanted to do. I've been using lots of Lucky Clover and I think I'll give Jelly Bean Green a turn. So I'm gonna be using smaller blending brushes for this. So I've got three here that I use with my colors. And I'm going to go in this order, purple, blue, green, or green, blue, purple. And there's a reason for that. These colors are really beautiful. Um, but if I did this way, these two colors would not blend and they'd be very brownish. They would look very ugly. So you wanna kinda go in rainbow order, even when you're not doing a full rainbow. Okay, so we'll start with a little bit of purple. We'll do the wild wisteria here. Alrighty. Okay. And then I'm gonna start right up here on this one. I'm gonna do a little bit of inking. And can you see how pretty that flourish design is showing through there? Ah, oh, that's so pretty. And you can pick any spot you want on these feathers to start your purple. Ooh, that's pretty too. Get so excited with the color. I'll go up here. And I'm really like putting a lot of color down because I want these to be really vibrant because we're going to be putting the feather dyes on top. So we want as much vibrant color showing through as we can. I know it's like magic, isn't it? When that color comes through. Ooh, lots of vibrant color there. Okay, we can come back to this color. Now the next color we're gonna do is turquoise sea. So I wanna get a lot of that on my brush. And I'm gonna do a little blend into that purple. A little more of that. Okay, and then I can take that purple and I can go over the line between them to kind of turn that a little bit more purpley blue, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. I love this set of stamps and dies so much. Now I'm starting to think of other kinds that we can create that do the same kind of thing because this is just too fun. All the things that you can do with this. And don't worry if a little bit of your ink scoots into the next feather, that's okay. 
Okay, and I want to go back over this line here, add some of that purple. And here too. Okay, so now we're gonna do our final color, which is gonna be jelly bean green. I'm gonna ink up my brush real well. I'm gonna come in from the bottom here with that green and work my way up into that blue and then down into the green. There we go. All right. This is so different from anything that I've done. <laughs> You're going to love doing this technique. It's just it's just fun, something different. You know, it's always fun to try something new. And I definitely think it makes a difference to have the feathers going outside of the actual piece of cardstock. I don't know. I think that's going to give it a nice little added touch. Okay. So there I have my three feathers stenciled. Let me close up the ink here. And then before I take this stencil off, I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm just going to like rub over the white parts of this design. And I am pushing the paper toward like if there's any little areas here that are just loose work your way toward those areas. Don't push away from them because you don't want to, you want to try to not bend them too much. I bent it a little, but it's not too bad. Okay. I just wanted to get that ink up that's kind of resting on top of the um, embossing powder. We can do it again after we take it off, but I didn't want to smear it all over the white parts of the card. Okay, so now I'm going to gently remove this you can see i have the outlines of these feathers here and this looks cool but it's going to look even more cool when we get the white feathers on top because that will separate everything really nicely you'll be able to see the detail in the feathers okay so now we need a little bit of black of course for my card we need a little black outline so I'm going to cut down a piece. Am I zoomed in too close? Let me just zoom out. I have a 36 inch Gina K. I would definitely get the re-inkers. Um, we do sell the full bundle of re-inkers, but right now I don't think we have all the colors in stock, but I would definitely do re-inkers, especially the colors you use the most. If, you, uh, if your ink pads start to dry out. I mean, they, they will over time, especially if, you know, if you're not using them, you live in a hotter climate, any ink will eventually lose moisture, um, just like anything else in a really hot climate or in a very dry climate. I know here in Wisconsin, it gets so dry in the winter, my hair is always standing on end. So um, yeah, definitely pick up some re-inkers because there's so many techniques you can do with those too. Okay, so I'm going to adhere these two together. I know the black always makes everything pop, doesn't it? I'm going to use a little extra tape on here. And then I'm going to pop that onto that. Okay, now I'm going to get a white card base because I really don't want anything to take away from the color but we can try other colors if you want. I know you guys like to see the other colors, but I think white is going to be the ticket here. So I'm cutting this down to the four and a quarter inch mark to make a, a tent style white card base. And then I'm going to score it at five and a half inches. There we 
go. And then this whole panel is going to go on top. Don't you think that that just really, that's just the thing, huh? I like that. Okay. Let's just go with it because this was in my brain. <laughs> All right, now if you want to, you can leave it like this, but I think the feathers are the ticket here. So let's get some feathers and we'll lay them on top. Now you see how all of that detail now just looks so amazing, doesn't it? And you get all of that design underneath. And I love how it goes a little bit off of the card itself, like off of that panel. And we're going to put this on with Connect Glue. I just want to lay them on there and see how they look. We'll, we'll line them up really easily once we have the glue. And then this one will go right here. Oh, isn't that so pretty? I love how that looks. Doesn't it make a huge difference? And it just gives it depth and dimension. Now, if you wanted to, you could take the extra minute or two, or 20. <laughs> um... Repeat the question. Yeah, I will repeat the question when I give an answer. Somebody asked me what to uh, do when their ink pads dry out. Should they get the re-inkers? Okay. Let's see here. So I have these extra ones. Let me just pull this out here. There we go. Now, if you wanted to, you could layer these together because if you layer them together, you get more height and it becomes a little, you know, it's thicker and it just stands off the card a little bit more. You just see more of that. So, you know, that's one thing that you can do if you have lots of time see if we have a little time for that because I think that that would really make a difference and I think that we do. So I am going to use some of our Connect Glue in this fine tip bottle. Now when you're doing stuff like this with delicate images like this, it really does make a difference using a super fine tip. So, and you don't have to glue every single part. I mean, I would just make sure you go around the perimeter for sure. And that's pretty easy to do. Now just come down a little bit, down the center. This is a great activity when you like don't know what you want to do. You can just cut out a bunch and you can do this, this kind of layering and just have them ready to go for cards. Any die cuts, your um, words, anything like that, really just have so much more depth when they're layered. And then when you layer them together, I would just start at one end, start down like at the point there, get that lined up. And then, you know, work your way down the design, whether it's a word or a feather or whatever you're doing, a frame, just work your way down the design. And you can see now that is perfect without any issue at all. I do think I put the one with the pencil line on top, so I should have been a little bit more careful, but it's so faint, you can't even really notice it. And now you can see that that is just gonna give it a little bit more height. You can do three if you want, but it'll give it a little more height in there and it'll make that design just jump off the cardstock a little bit more. So let's put this one on the card since we have it here. And it's also, it's already a little sticky <laughs> around the edges. So we're going to put some of this glue here. And I would just make sure that you always have, you know, all around the perimeter little dots of glue. I get my fingers stuck to them all the time. If you do down the center, and maybe just, you know, a couple little dots on each segment. 
That's all you really need. We'll see how that works. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start down here at the end and line it up. Remember, you've got some bulk on there because of your embossed design. So you do want to kind of put a little pressure in there. There we go. There's the first one. And I'm just leaving that. That'll dry, even though I put a little glue there, but I'm just kind of leaving this part right here just kind of, you know, hanging there. So you can see that gives you a lot of depth and dimension. Isn't that nice? I like that. Okay, let's do another one. We'll knock these out pretty quickly. Just looking for the one that has the pencil line on it. I think it's this one. I don't know if you guys can hear my phone blowing up, but it is just, everybody is texting me and calling me, and it's like nobody knows I'm live. Only you guys. You guys are the only ones. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. But I really get a lot of pleasure out of just gluing die cuts together. I don't know what it is about this, but it's very relaxing to me. And I think that you might enjoy it too once you realize that it's a lot easier than you think. So again, starting at the bottom, get those together. And once you get like one part together, they almost just jump together perfectly. There we go. That's true. They might want to know if I weathered the storm last night. That's very true. But we did. You know, I, I really enjoyed laying in bed last night. I put the blind all the way up so I could watch the sky in bed. And I really enjoyed just watching the lightning. I don't know. I really enjoy lightning. I know it's a lot of people are frightened of it. And I guess I should be too, because it's not something I wouldn't want to be outside walking around in it. But from the safety of my bed underneath all the covers, it was actually such a beautiful show. It's like God's beautiful light show. Okay. So we'll get this one on here. Oops. Well, you can see that the, the glue itself is very forgiving. Until you get it positioned exactly where you want it, you can move it around a little bit. There we go. Okay. So there is the second feather. And we'll do one last one here. And then this, is, this card is going to be done. I could add a few little rhinestones or maybe some of our new pearls. I really like the whole white on white, too. Um, I didn't realize how much I liked, like, the white on white embossing and the white on white die cutting. Usually I would put another color on the back so I could see it more, but in real life you can see it beautifully. So remember, if you're new here, I always post pictures of my cards both on YouTube in my community tab and also in our Facebook group, Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. So if you're on Facebook but you haven't joined our group, it's a really awesome group. We've got so many really wonderful members that are so supportive. If you're a newer stamper and you don't want to share, you don't have to, but if you want to, you're going to get lots of great feedback because our members are just so welcoming and so encouraging. So I highly suggest you join. I'm in there all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right too. Pat said the colors show up better with the layering of these die cuts. And I, I agree with that. I think if we even layered it higher, it would even show up more. <laughs> But, you know, I don't want you to just sit and watch me glue things together for an hour. So two is good. 
And we're going to give this card away. So if, again, if you're new here, um, we always give my cards away. I do have quite a few on my desk that I have to get out from the last two, two and a half weeks. Um, and I will do that probably by the end of this week. They'll all go out. But um, the way we pick is just from your comments. So if you're new, you know, say hello. Tell us where you're from. Tell us what you think. Tell us if you like the colors, whatever you want to say. But just leave a comment because Tom randomly picks from all the comments. And somebody gets to take home the card. Okay. You know, my, you guys know my little dog, Teddy. I miss little Teddy, but Teddy was always so afraid of thunderstorms. I mean, just terrified. And I know a lot of dogs are. She had a thunder shirt and all of that, but it didn't really work for her. She was just too terrified. Um, I mean, it worked a little bit. It was better than no thunder shirt, but it's still, she was still terrified. So whenever I would see that a thunderstorm was coming, ugh, I would just dread it on her behalf. Now that she is waiting for me on the other side of that rainbow bridge, I actually don't have to worry about her being totally stressed out. And um, it's kind of nice to be able to listen to the thunder. Okay, so I've got some of these rhinestones, I mean pearls. These are our new rainbow pearls. I want to see if any of the colors would work in these. I love this card. I got to tell you, I'm loving this one. Let's see what these colors look like. Ooh, this blue might be really pretty. It's not the same blue, but I don't think it matters. I think it's a really pretty blue. Look how pretty that looks. Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. I, that's a really pretty blue. This green is a little bright, too. So maybe not for this color combo. Maybe I'll do some of these pearls. These are the plain pearls. The, they're called soft white. Maybe I'll add a few soft white ones. And if not, I'll look at the rhinestones. We'll see what else we have. We've got, ooh, I know what else would look really good with this color combination, the mermaid's tail sequins. Let's just lay a few in there and see. I know I've done a lot of these, but oh, that's such a pretty sequin. And it's like the perfect combination of colors. Let me zoom in so you can see that. Jeff, you already entered just by making a comment. Jeff asked, how do I enter to win the card? Just by making a comment, um, you're already entered. Just put a, I'm gonna use this. I've been doing this technique just by like placing a couple of them here and there. Definitely need to do big one down here and we need a, a tiny one in there oops things happen so what do you think of adding a few sequins like that no to the blue no blue all right you want to see the pearls let's do the pearls we've got a little bit of time to pick We'll just try the pearls because the pearls are quite lovely. They are absolutely spectacular. My, yeah, these are pretty. All right, you guys are right. But how would we know if we didn't try, right? We got to try them first to see if we like them. And then we need a baby one in there. I have glue on my finger too. I, I do like the pearls. I'm going to admit it. I like the pearls. Just feel like this whole area over here just needed a little something and those pearls are kind of a nice touch. And then if we, you know, put one up here, maybe two here and two up in the other corner. Let's get a baby one. We'll lay them out first and then we'll add them. Here. Did you guys pick up any pearls with your order when you placed an order for the new release? I have some major ideas for these pearls too for Christmas. 
with the big snowflake stencils and stuff. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. It's very soft. You like the mermaid better, Kim? I do like both. I have to admit, I like both. But maybe what some people are seeing is because these mermaid tail ones are so spectacular, maybe it takes away from some of the color in here and we want our eye drawn more to the color and less to the embellishment. We want the embellishment to be just a little extra thing. So let's go with the pearls. Somebody, whoever wins this card is gonna have to deal with the pearls. <laughs> One here. Is my head in the way? No. Okay. It feels like it's in the way. Alrighty. So, Tom, do you have a word of the day? I just might. <clears throat> you do? Is it a word of the day? Uh, hold on one second. Oh, I like the way this is looking. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, you ran out of money before you got to the embellishments? All right, so next time, next time, make sure you grab some, because definitely during the holidays, these pearls are going to be in on every card. <laughs> okay. okay, so we have... An expression of the day, kind of an oxymoron of the day. An oxymoron? Yeah, and I know you've got... Am I an oxymoron? I probably think <laughs> we've had one around here for quite a while, <laughs> but no. So an oxymoron, you know, is like you know, words that like are opposite used together, like icy hot. Oh, yes. Okay. An oxymoron. There's a funny one from George Carlin going back. And um, it's jumbo shrimp. <laughs> jumbo shrimp oxymoron. <laughs> I like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> but that is kind of funny. Icy hot, too. That's kind of funny. They're silly. But they're, you can't forget them. All right. Well, here is my finished card. I'm trying to put all these pearls back in the bag because I haven't stored them yet in a little dish or anything, a little container. Okay. So what do you guys think of this card? You going to try it? I definitely want you to try it. And I want to see what you do and what background stamp you use and what color combo you use. I can't wait. I love George Carlin, too. He's pretty funny. Pretty funny dude. All right, Tom. Well, it is time to give this card away. Okay. And by the way, before you do it, before you go on, um, and I don't know what I did with the stamp set. It was here a second ago. Oh, here it is. I don't know if you noticed, but there's these tiny, tinier feathers. And a tiny feather like that would look really nice just stamped on the back with your little made with love or whatever you put on the back. And you can also decorate your envelope. So you could stamp that and color it in these same colors just on the envelope, maybe going up the side or something. So for those that love to decorate the insides of the cards, the envelopes, those little feathers are perfect. Okay, so let's get in the scene, Tom. There we are. Here we are. So who gets this card today? Okay, we got one card to give away today. One card, yep. One card, and that... My labor of love. ...goes to... <laughs> drum roll, please. Lori Pinky Brown, you are the winner. Yay, Lori, congratulations. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will get that out to you. Congratulations, Lori. Well, everybody, I do have a little bit of business, so I hope you're still here. Um, <laughs> next Tuesday, Tom and I will not be here uh, next Tuesday night because... We are celebrating Father's Day with our girls, and we are going to go see Blue Man Group. 
I'm so excited. I've seen them once before, like 20 years ago, and they were amazing. So we're going to go see Blue Man Group on Tuesday night. So it looks like we're going to go live Wednesday night instead. You're around on Wednesday, aren't you, Tom? Um, I don't know. <laughs> All I right. Check. Well, we'll figure it out. If it's not Wednesday night, I know. I are you? I know you're not around Monday night. So we're probably going to go live another night. If we can't, we'll just go live next Thursday at our regularly scheduled time. Well, we're going to do that anyway. And then I will be back this weekend with another five-minute card video. So stay tuned for that. And uh, then we'll be back to our regular schedule again. But our one of my daughters works on Sunday, and we all wanted to be together for Father's Day, so we decided to pick a night when everybody was off at night, and that happened to be Tuesday night. Everybody but us, but we know you guys are flexible, especially when it comes to Tom, right? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope you had a good time. Um, we'll be back this weekend with another five-minute card video, and until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much, and mwah, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.